Well, good morning, everybody. Thank you for having me here. I'm an uh, interventional cardiologist in the Woodlands part of the Methodist Debakey Group. This is a large topic, um, complications of myocardial infarction. We'll try to go through that. This will be a complete opposite of the talk that Dr. Kleinman gave, and I have close to 60 slides. And so, um, so you'll see the whole spectrum from no slides to a lot of slides, uh, which will confuse you. So complications of acute myocardial infarction generally can be lumped into hemodynamic disturbances, LV and RV failure, cardiogenic shock, and mechanical complications, arrhythmic complications, pericardial complications, and lumped into other. Uh, three major mechanical complications of acute myocardial infarctions are LV free wall rupture, intraventricular septal rupture, and mitral regurgitation. And the mainstay of treatment after initial stabilization is surgical therapy. Uh, in a large uh, ST elevation primary PCI trial of close to 6,000 patients, mechanical complications were seen in close to 1% of patients presenting, presenting with acute STEMI. Mortality rate in patients is higher in patients who develop uh, mechanical complications compared to patients that do not. So fairly um, significant clinical uh, sequelae of uh, developing mechanical complications. A um, bit about LV uh, free wall rupture. It is usually seen in uh, the older patients, anterior infarct, and it has primarily been reduced by primary percutaneous uh, intervention and early revascularization, beta blocker therapy, and decreased use of routine anticoagulation post-mechanical reperfusion um, that used to occur before. So uh, these are a few risk factors for free wall rupture. Timing usually in the first five days following a myocardial infarction, and it has been divided into an early phase and a late phase. And in the early phase, um, type 1 and type 2, um, generally um, type 1 is at the site of the infarct, type 2 is at the junction of the normal and, and the infarcted myocardium is where the uh, rupture occurs. Presentation is fairly dramatic with um, uh, sudden death being uh, one of the uh, sequelae, a hemopericardium, tamponade, and death. Management is, you know, high index of suspicion, immediate transthoracic echocardiogram if uh, significant hemopericardium, pericardiocentesis, stabilization, and uh, immediate surgery for therapy. Frequency of changing gears a little bit. Another mechanical complication is ventricular septal rupture and frequencies approximately half of um, the um, free wall rupture. And the timing usually is in first three to five days. The risk factors usually are the elderly females. And this uh, would be, um, as following Dr. Keith Ellis, a board question. Patients with single vessel disease that have not had time to develop collateralization seen in patients with a large anterior infarct with a wraparound LAD with uh, inferior ST elevation in addition to anterior ST elevation and patient with acute anterior infarct have a high risk of uh, development of septal rupture. Uh, the site of uh, septal rupture and anterior infarct is in the apical septum and an in inferior infarct is at uh, the basal septum, so different areas in the anterior and inferior infarct. Clinical manifestation is hypotension post uh, on patients uh, presenting with acute infarct and can develop into biventricular failure or right-sided failure. A, a loud, harsh, holosystolic murmur uh, is usually noted with a, um, in half the patient, there's a hyperdynamic precordium with the RV left. And management is, of course, uh, echocardiogram with colorful Doppler imaging. Um, in the cath, cath lab, there'll be a, a step up of um, um, oxygenation from the right atrium to the right ventricle. Uh, management of surgical repair is usually controversial. These are sicker patients. Some studies have shown higher mortality in patients who have been taken for repair earlier on. And uh, so stabilization followed by surgical repair is recommended. And uh, stabilization with medical therapy, early use of hemodynamic support with percutaneous LV assist devices followed by surgical repair. Long-term um, survival is increased with surgical repair and concomitant uh, surgical revascularization of coronary disease. <clears throat> this is a patient with an anterior infarct with uh, 
uh, the images on the right side uh, demonstrating a, a ventricular septal rupture, which is closed percutaneously in a high-risk surgical patient. So the options of percutaneous repair with uh, closure devices um, uh, have been done in select patients. And this is, again, fluoroscopic uh, images of deployment of a septal occlusion device and for uh, a ventricular septal rupture. Acute mitral regurgitation is another mechanical complication of um, myocardial infarction. In a large Mayo uh, clinic experience, approximately 3% of patients developed significant myocardial infarction who presented with acute MI. The shock trial, 40% of patients who presented with acute MI and shock had uh, moderate to severe mitral regurgitation. And the causes of mitral regurgitation in acute MI can be ischemic papillary muscle, um, papillary muscle rupture, and LV dilatation. Um, mitral regurgitation murmur in acute mitral regurgitation may or may not be loud. So, so just not hearing a mitral regurgitation murmur in a patient who is hemodynamically unstable post myocardial infarction does not necessarily exclude severe mitral regurgitation. Uh, the papillary muscle rupture, there are two papillary muscles, the anterolateral and the posterior medial. The anterolateral posterior uh, papillary muscle has dual blood supply from the LED and the left circumflex system and the pap posterior medial papillary muscle has blood supply from the RCA right PDA system, which is single, and so the rupture of the posterior medial papillary muscle is six to 12 times more frequent. And uh, clinical manifestation, acute hypotension, pulmonary edema. Uh, <clears throat> diagnosis is clinical with, of course, echocardiogram and cold flow Doppler, and one third of patients to accurately identify that transesophageal echocardiogram may be needed. And treatment of this is prompt diagnosis, initiation of medical therapy, um, supportive care with LV assist devices, which the paradigm has now changed to much earlier use, and repair or replacement, so surgical uh, treatment of that, of the acute mitral regurgitation. Uh, hemodynamic disturbances of uh, acute uh, myocardial infarction. LV failure is one of the big ones. Uh, left ventricular ejection fraction is one of the most important predictor of uh, long-term mortality after ST elevation MI, and this can lead to pulmonary vascular congestion, depression of cardiac output. Um, inotropic therapy used to be used and is still used, but is not now uh, the initial uh, um, paradigm, or, and the paradigm shift has been for earlier uses of mechanical support devices for hemodynamics. Avoidance of arrhythmias, um, diuretics, uh, and um, reduction of afterload reduction. Uh, vasodilators may be used, but sometimes with uh, hemodynamic instability, one is limited on using those. Um, inotropic agents are used and, and have their pros and cons, but generally uh, they um, have not, they have been uh, not as helpful and uh, more um, now uh, shift towards uh, um, percutaneous assist devices uh, for hemodynamic support of that. 80% um, of STEMI patients, uh, the cardiogenic shock is related to extensive LV myocardial damage, and 20% of patients due to the mechanical complications that we spoke about. And with cardiogenic shock and um, acute MIs, uh, presents as uh, hypotension, reduction in cardiac index, elevated LV filling pressures, and low output states with a vital organ hyperperfusion, uh, decreased uh, mentation, um, decreased urine output, et cetera. The risk factors on these are usually older patients, patients with prior infarcts and uh, anterior infarcts. In uh, cardiogenic shock, the classic cardiogenic shock paradigm, cardiogenic shock with MI leading to a uh, sequence of events that lead to more ischemia and further depression of cardiac output and, and worsening of shock. And um, in, in the shock trial, in patients less than 75 years of age, primary PCI significantly improved mortality in patients uh, who presented with um, cardiogenic shock and STEMI. And there's been a significant decrease uh, in mortality in patients with cardiogenic shock with the use of primary mechanical PCI over the past two decades. IV beta blocker use is now not standard in patients uh, who present with um, STEMI. Intraortic balloon pump has been used, uh, but has, did not show any benefit in uh, the shock trial. 
Impella is a percutaneous uh, LV assist device, which uh, has three to five times more hemodynamic support than the uh, standard intraortic balloon pump. Initially, the Impella 2.5 was a uh, device uh, with uh, two point liter uh, per minute of uh, cardiac output support, and now the Impella CP and the Impella 5, which is a, a surgical uh, insertion device. It's a percutaneous uh, LV assist device for hemodynamic unloading of the left ventricle and also now within the past year, the right ventricle. Uh, easier to use, uh, minimally invasive, um, and uh, more aggressive earlier use in cardiogenic shock patients uh, over the past uh, five years. Tandem heart, another percutaneous LV assist device. Uh, now we segue into a uh, few pericardial complications of acute myocardial infarction. Uh, peri Post-infarction pericarditis, pericardial fusion, and the late uh, Dressler syndrome. Post-infarction pericarditis is fairly uh, frequent and usually um, does not cause any clinical sequelae. Um, pericardial friction rub is generally seen in the first two to three days after an acute myocardial infarction, which usually denotes a larger infarct size and more frequently in the anterior location. Diagnosis is clinically initially by auscultation, persistent ST elevation with uh, persistence of the upright T waves, suggestive of post uh, infarction pericarditis. Trans uh, thoracic echocardiogram is used to uh, evaluate for pericardial effusion in addition to the peri pericarditis. Uh, no need to change anticoagulation in patients who develop uh, post infarction pericarditis. Anti inflammatory agents such as um, NSAIDs are not used routinely. Aspirin or colchicine are the preferred therapeutic agent. Uh, pericardial effusion is common and uh, usually common in the early course of an acute MI and is often minimum or, minimal or mild, so it's uh, usually not uh, clinically significant. And there is always a risk of tamponade, so that should be kept in mind. Um, <clears throat> Postcardiac injury or Dressler syndrome described by Dressler in 1956, and it's um, uh, usually seen after the first one to two two weeks after a myocardial infarction, and the pathophysiology is autoimmune, and clinical diagnosis is late one to two weeks after myocardial infarction, patients with pleuritic chest discomfort, pericardial friction rub, fever, and elevated SED rate um, are usually helpful in the diagnosis. Treatment uh, with non steroidals corticosteroids um, were used in the past, but now uh, due to increased uh, recurrences with, associated with the use of steroids, um, that um, usage of steroid therapy has declined. Arrhythmias, <clears throat> significant um, early in the course of an acute MI, many different arrhythmias are seen. PVCs are seen, which uh, really are of no consequence other than treatment of the underlying ischemia and acid-based electrolyte disturbances. Accelerated atrioventricular rhythm is seen in about 20% of patients presenting with STEMI. Usually, we were taught that this was a marker of uh, a successful reperfusion, but now I've seen that the same incidence of accelerated atrioventricular rhythm is seen in patients with non-reperfused patients as well. So it's really not a marker of infarct-related patency, which we were traditionally thought. It's short duration, does not really affect any prognosis. Non-sustained ventricular tachycardia, again, not associated with any mortality risk and treatment the same as treatment of ischemia, hypoxemia, and underlying issues. Um, v ventricular tachycardia occurring late in the course of a ST elevation MI is usually seen with larger infarcts and LV dysfunction. Ventricular fibrillation usually is the highest incidence in the first hour after a STEMI, and then the incidence usually decreases. Secondary ventricular fibrillation after 48 hours of an infarct usually denotes a larger infarct with underlying concomitant LV dysfunction, and, and treatment of that um, is uh, the same. Bradycardia usually seen with inferior and posterior infarcts usually um, is transient and, um, a and asymptomatic and can be treated um, medically. Um, second degree um, and third degree uh, heart blocks and inferior and posterior infarcts usually is re resolve and do not require permanent pacing. Second and third degree heart blocks and anterior infarcts usually denotes a nodal or infranodal um, 
etiology and may end up uh, with a permanent pacemaker and a higher mortality. Um, other causes um, of acute MI, uh, venous thrombosis and permeabilism related to any sick patient that comes to the hospital and is in bed rest, LV aneurysm and LV thrombus. LV aneurysm is less than 5% after myocardial infarction and uh, develops late and treatment is usually surgical. Uh, venous thrombosis, we spoke about LV thrombus can occur usually in, um, in uh, larger infarcts with akinesis of the anterior and apical wall and anticoagulation uh, for the first three to six months. All right, thank you.